I consider Arches to be the most intriguing park I've ever visited. It is one of Utah's Mighty Five and the park that we'll cover today. Stone arches are found in many places, and wherever they are, people make it a point to go see them. Some of the more popular stone arches that we have seen include Angel's Window at the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, Hole Sea Arch on the Big Island of Hawaii, Natural Bridge State Park in Kentucky. This one is neat because you can take a chairlift up to the mountain to get to the arch without hiking and Arch Rock in Mackinac Island in Michigan. But Arches National Park has the densest population of stone arches anywhere in the world, with over 2,000 documented arches. I'm no geologist, but an arch is basically formed when a wall of rock, or a fin, has uh, a hole worn or punched through it. Ideal conditions requires the top layer of the fin to be harder than the material underneath. So the rock wears away underneath and the top remains, causing the arch. Unlike Zion that I described as an oasis in the desert, Arches is pretty much just a desert. A visit in the summer will be scorching hot, but you can still get hiking in in the morning and evening. Starting with the most iconic arch in Arches National Park, that's Delicate Arch. It's puzzling. It almost looks unnatural or man-made. You have to hike to see Delicate Arch. You can't see it from the road. There are two different trails, one that gets you to the arch and one that gets you to a viewpoint of the arch from the back side. We've done both. There are many arches and rock formations that are visible from the road or a short walk. So without further delay, here are the rest of the pictures that we managed to pack into our visit of Arches National Park.
Here's a picture of landscape arch with my family. That's me at three years old sitting on my mom's lap. A picture that you may have seen in one of many forms depicts a big gulf between man and God, and a cross as a bridge between the two. We have many problems in our world today, but the root of the problem is sin. Regardless who you are, God states that all has sinned and fallen short of God's standard. That sin causes problems in our society and separates us from God. That's the gulf. The fix to the problem today and the bridge that allows us to come to God is Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death. That's bad. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's good. That's really good. I pray you surrender your heart to Jesus Christ today. Thanks for watching.